Hey folks, welcome back. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redmond, Nine Don Professional. This is our AlphaGo versus the World Series. The world, frankly, not doing that well, but uh, having a whole lot of fun, as are we, and hopefully you as well. Uh, we're getting very close to the end, and uh, this is a very familiar face uh, that, that we get to uh, see today. Tell, tell us who the, the player is. Okay, uh, the human player, Niwei Ping, for the first time, the only time in this series. He's the legendary, I should say. The legendary. Legendary, yes. Um, he's probably well known by the Japanese pronunciation of his name also, Joe Ehe, uh, just because the Japanese, at that time in history, they were still pretty central in Goan. So there a lot of the promotion for him was done in Japanese also. Um, he was a great player who, um, in a way, he made Chinese go great. He was very successful in the Chinese, Chinese and Japanese uh, Super Goal matches, and that led to a boom in activity in China. That, that, that was sort of the beginning of a big boom in Chinese goal. So he's a very special player, a very uh, um, creative player in the opening also. So he, he's a bit he he does different stuff. Um, very interesting opening also. Can't wait to see how he does. And Master has black. And so this is the same opening that we have been seeing so many times with yeah. almost all of the players uh, playing here with white or otherwise playing here and here. And then AlphaGo will play the Kakari. It's a pattern we saw every every time over and over again. Um, there's no way New Aping is going to play that way. He, he, he wants to do something different. And show that he's um, his opening is better than these young guys. You know, he, he doesn't like to do it the one pattern thing, pattern thing. So he plays here. There's some reason to this. This is a strategy that you can see where white is leaving space to extend on the side here in one direction or the other. Um, and also, when white does take this point at R6. It's going to set up uh, an attachment at R3 also. So there's a combination there where white is uh, looking to hit a weak point of black's large knight's corner enclosure. So it's sort of, I sort of like the idea um, playing around with the marks here, but um, having this stone at R9 here, setting up that extension at R6 is uh, a strategy that white can use against the large knight's corner enclosure. Um, but I do have to remind you that the computer programs will be suggesting some kind of a corner enclosure in the lower left corner. So that's where, mm -hmm. that's why I've marked the board A and B there for two two of the candidate moves for white. Black plays a Kakari. And this is a point where this looks um, perfectly normal, but again, it's supposed to be big for white to play something in the corner. So for instance, like this, um, if you if you let... Leela zero play the game, you, you might see something like this. But you know, peeping there at three is was a very unusual move at the time. So in the game, white extends here. Uh, black plays a Kakari, plays a pincer. And so, you, you know, AlphaGo does play this, um, you might call it a pincer, I think maybe more correct to call it a double Kakari actually. Um, you can see AlphaGo playing this move fairly often. I, I think it works fairly well with Black's position in, in the lower, lower right corner. So Black is taking control of the lower side of the board. Jumping up, throwing once and jumping here. Um, putting pressure on White's group in the corner. So White plays here. Perfectly makes sense. Black pushes. White jumps. This is a point where uh, probably better for white to peep here and play this. This is a key point here, um, which gives white a very stable shape. Playing the peep first makes black just that much more heavy. So mm -hmm. so white has forced black into a heavy shape here. After white has played at three, if white played the peep afterwards, maybe black would not answer. So it's it's a good order of moves for white to play the peep at one first, give black a heavy shape there, and, and then protect at three, after which white can be hoping to play some kind of an Invasion on the lower side, and I would suggest it's probably M3. M3 is a good point to invade the lower side because white will be looking at this 
attachment at P3 next. There's a combination there where M3 works fairly well with the following attachment at P3. Mm -hmm. And I think we, I, if I recall correctly, we're going to see me suggesting that later in this game also. So in the game, uh, white played the jump here, black pushed through. And here, um, actually, Nui Ping, he plays his first mistake here. At, at this point, the game is still pretty much even. Um, I'll say again that when black is only giving six and a half point Komi, but it's supposed to be good for black. But it's not a, a big difference. If white had played here, this would have been a sort of a forcing move. Like, um, you might expect black to connect on the fourth line or maybe play something like this, in which case white would have sent it. White would have the op opportunity maybe to invade the left side or something. Uh, the suggested move for black is to jump out here. That makes sense. If white pushes through here, it's not a big deal. Black can just sacrifice the one stone and it's not a big loss. Um, white will actually probably continue in the upper upper right corner, putting some pressure on that black group, um, taking initiative on the upper side. It's still a pretty much an even game at this point. In the game, white answered here, this is just, I find it hard to believe that Nye would play this move. It was, this was, um, it's clearly a bad move. Um, I, it looks like a bad move to, to me. White's, White's just left, um, there's the opening for Black to play this slide here in the corner, which is gonna give White a headache. It's, it's gonna um, put pressure on White in the corner if Black at some point gets to play this slide. So White's corner is, is not as safe as if White had played here, in which case White would have the opportunity to push through here at any point. Mm -hmm. And so White would be pretty much 100% alive. So it was a slow move, and Black plays the extension on the left side. Mm. And the fact that in some cases, uh, when this Black black group gets reinforced and it starts moving out in the center, the fact that Black will have this this huge attack against White's group, this, this is going to, when Black slides here on the second line, it's going to be a um, significant attack on White. It's going to make it that much more difficult for White to invade the left side. Wow. And so there's a kind of psychological block to playing here, but this turns out to be the suggested move. <laughs> so like, I, I might be confusing you a bit here when I say that white should invite and invade anyway, but I, I'm just saying that, well, white for the time being does have that uh, potential to push through and cut it A, so maybe black's gonna be answering here. But after this, white will have to return to the corner because like, um, there's, oh, sorry. Uh, quicker again. So this kind of stuff could happen. You can see that white is getting into uh, a bit of a painful position. Oh no, oh ouch, yeah. So this is something that black is looking for, has has some something to do there. And it's that's the reason I don't like white's move here. Uh, it's a kind of a wasted stone. In the game, white continued on the right side. This is a big move. And like I was saying, it does look forward to an attachment here. But it's just not um, not working quite. Actually, um, white, the way white played here made things a bit worse. Um, because white played here and, and then white answered here. And this did not really work with the potential that white had built in the corner. So actually, uh, it's better for white to play here. And black has two ways to answer this. Like if black answers on this side, then white's going to live on in the corner. And the value of this white stone is really small. So this would be working for white and that white has ignored this move. And if black does continue with something like this, for instance, black's gonna be taking a very small profit there. So a narrow area that black is surrounding. So that's okay for white. White can afford to give that one stone away. On the other hand, if black plays on this side, then it's really interesting because white plays, uh, white plays away, starts attacking in the upper right. That corner group in the upper right seems to be one of the focal points in this game because Milo Zero and Kadago keep going back to the upper right corner. They continually want white to start something in the upper right corner. There's various shapes they're showing. 
in this case, white is looking forward to pushing through and cutting here. So this invasion at the 3-3 point is very effective. And if black covers at A, let's actually do it. If black covers at A, white can just live in the corner. It's, it's mm -hmm. perfectly alive. And it's going to be a fight between this white group and this black group. And since black has lost most of its base, um, the fight is going to be fairly close. So, so uh, white has to play fast paced like this. Just, just has to take Sente to attack the upper right corner first. After this, it's something like 33%. Um, surprisingly bad. Like it's, um, I know, I mean, uh, sorry, it's black's winning percentage is 71%. I'm sorry. Right. right. I mean, it's more like 15 points. So black switches to the upper corner and, and invades here. And this move, um, I'm going to call this the losing move. Mm. It was a very thick move, um, a very patient move. But it wasn't a position where white could afford to do that. So after white plays here, black's winning percentage goes up to 81%. It's really surprising. Um, I would. It's relatively difficult to to judge it that way for a human player, for myself at least. Um, but once black starts to reinforce the upper right corner here, it's just um, a definite lead for black. So white had to uh, play this invasion here. And this is actually a move that was not played very much at the time. It's more effect. It's more effective than starting with the three-three point because if black does answer, if black answers like with something like this in the corner, it's still not a living shape. Like white could white could just play here, and it would still not be a li living shape in the corner, or it would be very painful for black to try to live there. Like um, white would be getting extra moves on the outside in the process of black trying to make a living shape. And so black will probably, um, the suggested move is for black to go down and white jumps into the three, three point anyway. This kind of fight would be so much better for white. White's just taking away black space and turning it into a fight between this white group and this black group. And so both of these groups are baseless, uh, which means that it's about an even fight there. White has um, the opportunity to fight on a fairly even basis. It's not as if white's gonna get um, completely killed there on the upper side. And so it's important to take away black space so that white has the potential for counterplay, for, for a counterattack. In the game, um, black gets to uh, consolidate this group first. And after this, it's a very difficult game. Like you can see, um, Nye, he's a very confusing player sometimes. He does unorthodox things and um, very good at confusing his opponent. Again, um, I just have to say that it doesn't really work very well with AlphaGo. So um, AlphaGo actually finds this move to kill the corner and the corner group, the white group is dead. This is a position where if black plays, starts with something like this, then it's much more difficult for black to kill the white group. In this case, actually white would be alive. It's oh, a nice little problem. Yeah, it's a nice little problem where black, uh, where white can actually make a, a seki out of it, a living shape. Wow, that's that's very cool. And so that that's why uh, it was correct for black to start with this move. This, this was the correct move here. And it just, you know, everything, nothing works. Like white, white cuts here in the center. It's not going to amount to very much of an attack. And everything white tried out after this, it, it didn't really have much effect. So black black was just surrounding the, the areas that black had mapped out, making territory out of them. And black had enough territory. So there was a point in this game where black was close to 20 points ahead. Um, and of course, AlphaGo is going to give a lot of it back. In this game, maybe because it was such a famous player, and well, no, I'm just joking. AlphaGo doesn't realize that. But it didn't give everything back. Um, and it did end up they played to the end, and it was seven and a half points. Fascinating, isn't it? You know, it occurs to me, Michael, that one of the things that we see in this series, you know, this is, you know, this is 2017. We still got the KJ uh, games to go. Uh, we we still haven't seen, you know, the um, 
AlphaGo AlphaGo gains. We certainly haven't seen AlphaGo zero yet. It's a little bit of a moment in Go history where you've got folks who are, you know, getting to play the AI for the first time. You know, this this is a big deal, and so, you know, it's a it's a little bit. You know, we get we get to look back on on it, you know, and, and know all this stuff. Um, but you know, it's, and so it's kind of cool to see the old master coming out. You know, uh, in these last sort of series of games and and, and giving it a shot. So I, I gotta you know, give him a lot of credit. And I, I really like that he he didn't play the splitting move like everybody else played. He played his own move. Mm -hmm. He's a very original player. And that was his strength all, all the time. It, um, it was his sort of speciality to be able to play different things. And so he, he did well to show up in this game. Yeah. Great stuff. Well, thank you, Michael. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this uh, series. Good few more to go, but uh, we're, we're coming in uh, to, to the end. So thanks again for watching and see you next game.